Hello and welcome to the Discover History YouTube channel and so far on our Hadrian's Wall tour or shall we call it the Discover History tour of Hadrian's Wall uh, we've shown you bridges, we've showed you Hadrian's Wall itself we've looked at a turret for example there's much more to look at trust me there are many more videos to go now we decided today to come down uh, to this bit of land just south of Hadrian's Wall. So Hadrian's Wall runs along the crag in the distance, going in that direction up there, heading towards Sycamore Gap, way, way over there in the distance. And actually, south of the wall, uh, on this sort of flat area, relatively flat area, um, you do actually find what's known as a marching camp. Now, in theory, as Josephus says in his writing, a marching camp must be built every single time an army halts for a long period of time. So, if you can imagine, the army is marching north towards the barbaric north. When they stop, they have to build a camp. They don't just put their feet up, take their caligae off in relaxing the... Uh, I would say sunshine, but more so in the cloud, um, they do actually stop and have to be put to work. And what would have happened is, first of all, they would dig a ditch that would go around their camp, basically. Now, I am actually stood in that ditch. I don't know if you can see it from where you were watching this from, but in the distance there, going off towards the sheep, you may see that linear feature. So that is the ditch running across there. The ditch also runs up in that direction and it follows a nicely cut bridle way, which is on the right hand side of the screen there. So imagine it, the Romans have marched through. This is probably before Hadrian's Wall is built and they've halted. They've halted here on a nice bit of ground, away from the wind of the ridge up there, but far enough away that if anyone came over that ridge, if they were brave enough to climb the crag, there's enough field of vision to cut them down with arrows and that sort of thing. And basically, we've dug a ditch. Now, the soil out of the ditch is then thrown up to make an embankment, a parapet up here. And the interesting thing is, from archaeological remains, the parapets are not that high. So all you're talking about is around about one and a half metres higher than the ditch that's been dug out, basically. Now, inside that parapet area would then be the tents. And famously, the Romans had leather tents. And amazingly, they have been found in the archaeological record. If you ever get up to Scotland, and I'm only saying Scotland because this is the one that sticks in my head, there are big pieces of leather tent in the main museum of Scotland in the middle of Edinburgh. And this would have been completely filled with tents, usually around about 10 men inside one leather tent. So you would have seen all the tents stretching around. And they were built in exactly the same way as the forts that come along later on. So it would have rounded corners, as the later forts would have also. And you would have each unit giving a designated camping space. Also, like with the forts, the headquarters, the boss as such, the centurion, would be slap bang in the middle. But remember, a centurion is in charge of 80 men, not, as you would guess, a 100 men. It's one of the wacky things about the Romans, a bit like a Roman mile is different to a mile that we use today. Now, as well as having this ditch and a parapet with the tents inside, every Roman man carried with him a stake, a very specific carved stake. Now, for a long time, people assumed they were hammered in the top of the parapet to make a palisade. To be fair, if every man was carrying one of those, it still probably wouldn't fill a marching camp. So what would happen is, we think now, is they were lashed together very much like that, 
like uh, like a cheval de frise later on really and they would have been placed all the way along the top of the parapet so if you manage to climb up the crag and attack the marching camp here you would get shot at by arrows and uh, get get stones from slingers thrown at you then you've got a ditch then you've got the rampart with the stakes on top and then you've got the men inside waiting for you to try and get in a brave thing to do if you ask me now we know not necessarily in britain up here but in other parts of europe sometimes on the outside they could construct pits small circular pit mines which is actually where we get the word mine field comes from and these pits are really dug with stakes at the bottom to cause horses or maybe uh, chariots that the, the the counts are riding in or even just people running to fall into them breaking ankles standing straight onto the stakes going straight through the foot so these are very very good defensive features and you find them all across the landscape usually south of Hadrian's Wall and that's really down to the fact that these were built mainly for the workforce so you can imagine uh, it's 122 AD uh, Emperor Hadrian is given the order for building the wall and the Romans in this marching camp would then go up onto the ridge there quarry the stone and build Hadrian's Wall however we also know that these could have been overspill camps for the fort. So we've got a fort just at the back over there. And very simply, if there's a unit marching through, there's not enough, uh, enough space in the fort, they would occupy this technically old marching camp. We also know that these could have been occupied during the campaigning seasons, which really goes from March to October. So you could have units coming through the area and this makes a good overnight stopping point. The interesting thing about this marching camp here, um, near, the, the, near the quarry up there, uh, Walltown Quarry, is the fact that it has been divided up. You see it on an Ordnance Survey map, the way it's been divided up. So at some point, someone's gone, we don't really need the full size camp, we'll cut it down. And they've dug another ditch and a rampart halfway through the middle. Which is why when myself and Ian came into this field, we knew it was next to the bridle way. But when we looked at it, we thought, hang on a minute, there's two marching camps here. In a way there is. But these marching camps were sometimes slighted, or like I said, left in case they were needed at a later date. Now where the map is on the floor there, that's really marking the corner of the parapet. So hopefully you can see the ditch running down here and you can see the land coming up. And that is actually on the corner, the rounded corner, the, the, the turn of the marching camp just up here really. And like I said, these marching camps were very important. No Roman was allowed to take his Caligai off, sit back, no matter where he was in the empire, unless a marching camp was built but like i said these would have been used for the workmen on hadrian's wall and they would have been used after uh, marching camps were uh, technically overspills like i said or they could also be used for training training maybe some britons have joined the roman army uh, auxiliaries only obviously and they're being taught about Roman engineering. They would be taught that this is what we have to build every night. If you look at Trajan's column, for example, there's some brilliant images there with the legionaries digging a marching camp, wearing their Lorica segmentata. And all they've done is laid their scutum and their pilum down. They're basically doing it in kit. Later on in the Great War, 1914, 1918, you also see soldiers digging, rifle on their shoulder, slung, and they're wearing their equipment. You don't take your equipment off just because you're doing some manual work. What you have to remember is they could very easily be attacked. So it's important to always remain ready. It's only when the fort is built, or shall we say the marching camp is built, that they can then relax. The gates would be manned by sentries as such. Everyone else can cook, take their Caligar off, and finally relax for the night. Anyway, it's something different. It's not that obvious. Hopefully you can see it. We can see it on the ground, but I can never tell if you can see it down there. 
Make sure you subscribe. There's still a lot for us to talk about. We haven't spoke about a mile castle yet. We haven't even mentioned the Vallum that sits behind Hadrian's Wall. Stay safe, everyone. Support the heritage of this country. Make sure you get out. Visit your museums that are open. Make sure you come to outdoor sites as well. Remember the rules. Stay socially distant. Wash those hands. Extremely important. And technically avoid crowds that's what we've been doing anyway on that note stay safe and we'll see you soon